Thank you for attending the presentation. My name is Abdullah Salimi. It's an honor to present here at the TGR conference. And this talk is about an evolving theme in my PhD about changing energy behavior in domestic buildings from wastage to savings. And I have been supervised by a a wonderful team of uh, supervisors from this university, Professor Abbas Amira, Dr. Hussain Malik Mohammadi, and uh, Dr. Ki Kong Dio. And to outline the talk, uh, I will split my presentation into four parts. I will talk about uh, basically the motivation behind the research and the aims, which is basically the why. I will discuss the methods so far used in implementing and executing the aims, the how, and I will discuss the initial results that I have so far from my second year of the PhD, the what, and then we will conclude by the dream of achieving the goals and uh, the objectives by the end of the PhD. So to start in terms of motivation, behavior is a really critical driver in energy usage, and it's not only in let's say, domestic buildings, but in corporate buildings as well. And it has ignited innovations in research, especially in electric energy efficiency. As you can see in this plot, uh, this is basically a summary of uh, a study um, done by the government in 2021, the UK government. And it depicts how household occupants save energy consumption. Uh, when they are faced with, uh, let's say, cost challenges. And as you can see in the, in the UK, the energy prices are soaring uh, from last year until now. And people have opted for different uh, methods to reduce the bills. Uh, some of them are habit-based, some of them are economical, and some of them are other techniques. And you can say you can use less heat, you can uh, uh, spend less money on other activities such as shopping, such as clothing. Uh, you can uh, reduce the budget you have on holidays. And that was all affected by energy prices going up. And this indicates that energy behavior can actually change uh, when confronted by uh, different factors that affect your life. But in this research, we, we don't want to force people to change their behavior. We would like to encourage them by uh, giving them recommendations that will help them maintain their lifestyle and saving energy. So that's basically the, the aim of this research. And uh, the literature have discussed different techniques and in the UK and in the world about how this can be done using technology. And one of the most important steps is collecting data. So when you collect data, you can analyze it and make an informed decision. And a contribution in this work is to use artificial intelligence to automatically process the data so you can have automated decision making. So that's basically the motivation and the aim in general to collect data, analyze it, and uh, recommend ways to optimize energy efficiency at home. So the let's say the motivation is powered by, let's say, an interest in psychology. So this figure is actually adapted from one of the uh, bestseller books by Charles Duhigg, uh, The Power of Habit. Uh, I know some of you have read it. And this is the habit loop. It's basically an abstract way to uh, model how people work, especially when they operate on habits. So there is always a cue. And the cue is basically the trigger that uh, causes you to uh, do the action, the habit itself. And usually the routine gives you a reward and the reward is strengthening uh, when the queue comes back again to do uh, or to execute the routine again. This can be, let's say, um, given a metaphor for smoking, for uh, brushing your teeth, uh, for running, and for also energy efficiency habits. So what we are trying to do is to create habit loops that use the same queue and rewards that people have in their lives and change the routine from something that consumes a lot of energy to something that is energy efficient. And to talk about that, I would like to give you an overview of like technically what we are doing uh, in my research. And this is actually an evolution from my last year's presentation. 
this year we are collecting data using smart plugs and smart plugs are collected in a domestic household so i have uh, installed a number of house my smart plugs in my home and the data is collected in a data hub for storage and management at the same time there are different ambient environmental sensors that collect temperature humidity and occupancy to know if someone is in the room or not which is very important when making decisions all of the data is stored in the data hub and is shown visually in the energy home portal this energy home portal not only visualizes the data but gives you a glimpse on how can you save using recommendations that's basically how the system we are developing is constructed now to show you some let's say implementation of what i have done here we have for example the results so far so these are different smart plugs that i have installed in my household this one is for the toaster for the tv for the kettle there are others including washing machine uh, my computer setup at home the fridge etc and the data has been collected so far for six months uh, we have totaled around the three million data points and we have started uh, conducting some analysis and this brings me to this um, figure that shows the classification results of the different data and as you can see uh, the classifier has been developed not only in the cloud but you know uh, back to the presentation uh, the first presentation by Akoi is data privacy is important and this is why we have done the classification in the house itself which means that the data doesn't leave the house to a private or a public cloud service. It goes inside the house and doesn't leave the house, and it is classified there. And we are developing a model that is generic, robust in a way that helps understand the data for different households. Uh, next is, let me go back. Uh, yeah. Can you go back to the previous slide, please? I think I lost it. The one before. Thank you. So to conclude, and it's talking about the why, we aim by 2030, which is an agenda um, say developed by the United Nations is to achieve uh, some of the sustainable development goals, the SDGs, which include creating affordable and clean energy that contributes to decent and economical growth. We also would like to contribute to the endorsement of responsible consumption and production of energy. And finally, this system, as you can see in the figure on the right, uh, by the end of hopefully next year, we aim to have a, a modular system that can be installed at domestic households in the UK and worldwide that collects data privately, analyzes them, and also presents uh, useful recommendations to the end user for uh, improving energy efficiency. I hope this talk is useful, and I'm happy to answer any of your questions. Thank you. Uh, I think you're muted, so I won't hear you. Okay. We, ca we clap for you, Abdullah. <laughs> oh, you did hear it. <laughs> yes. Good. Yes. Yes. I'm here. Um, you have a question. Abdullah, first, I would like to thank you for your nice presentation. And then I come up with this question. You said that the data we kept inside inside the property i mean that the analysis and everything is inside uh, and we do not have any privacy problem and such a things am i right yes uh, i would like to know that where this analysis uh, what is the central processing unit here uh, i mean that there we can have this uh, on, on which device can we have this analysis Okay, thank you so much for the question, Mohsen. So the data processing will be conducted in 
an Ordroid XU4 board. It's a very powerful edge computing device. It includes uh, eight cores, and four of them are for high computational intensive work, and four of them, the remainder is for, let's say, soft computing work. So that's what we are using as the hub for collecting the data. It stores the data. At the same time, we are using the multi-core uh, GPU to process it uh, in near real-time speed. And in terms of specifics, we are using uh, the Home Assistant open source software for managing the data. And we're using uh, ML algorithms using uh, TensorFlow and Keras for the classification. I hope this answers your question. Uh, so, you said that uh, it is being run on a GPU, right? Yes. No recommendation system. Uh, yes. Have you ever thought about uh, whether this recommendation system is cost effective or not? For example, if you want to have such an implementation for each user, uh, for each property, which is including these type of resources, like what you said, Arduino. Arduino is cheap, but what about GPU and other stuff, other things? So, have you ever thought about this this part of your project, this part of your uh, problem, or not? Yes, thank you for the actually very critical question. That's one of the things that I discuss with uh, my supervisors uh, regularly is, you know, the, the smart plugs and the data hub themselves, they consume energy. So when you install, for example, 10 smart plugs at your home, you are basically increasing your energy bill, even by a little, but you are consuming more energy. And the same is for the data hub. Of course, the data hub consumes, according to our measures, about 10 watts. So it, it's not much, uh, but the overall gain uh, is to have within one year or six months of using the system to improve the energy consumption habits of the household. And we will recommend by the end of that period, if your power consumption efficiency increases a lot, you can let's say disconnect some part of the system so you can maintain your energy efficiency and reduce the redundant smart plugs that you you already optimized the maximum for so i agree with you power consumption can be increased in a bad way for uh, using a lot of smart plugs in the data hub that's why we are endorsing a temporary measure to improve the energy efficiency habits and then partially disconnecting the system I hope this answers the question. Thank you so much. You're welcome.